So this is the second lecture and talk in the series of kind of six that I'm doing on the uncanny. Uh, I'm Dr Neil Cox from the University of Reading. It looks quite nice in here, quite light, but actually I'm, um, I'm doing this talk on a, on a particularly cold winter's morning. I travelled in today um, I was actually sleet, it was dark, I was a bit miserable, I was sitting very, very cold. I was walking past all these lovely houses, um, and I know I shouldn't, but I couldn't help, you know, having a peek, looking inside, because some of them had the curtains slightly drawn, um, and some there were, they were actually, you know, it's the morning, but they'd lit, lit fires, uh, home fires. And there was families, and even in one, I actually saw, you know, a proper muffin, uh, you know, in front of the old fire, toasting away. And I thought to myself, you know, it's these houses, as I'm looking in, cold outside, they just look the most homely houses you could possibly imagine. All warm, all light, all full of love and they're all content. And then another thought occurred to me, freezing as I was, walking here past the beautiful houses. And that is actually these houses were not homely to me at all. They weren't my home. There was someone else's home. And I was on the outside of it. And I suppose that's one thing about homes. For a home to be really homely, you know, it's got to be protecting. Um, and it's got to be private. Um, and it's got to be caring and loving. Um, and enclosed, yeah. You know what I mean? But the problem with things that are private and enclosed is that they're also secret. They're kind of occult. Yeah. If the home is really homely, because it's private, it's also kind of unhomely, unfamiliar, because it is secret. And in Freud's 1919 essay on the uncanny, this is something he's thinking about really deeply. Uh, Freud's essay, The Uncanny, is the term, because Freud's writing in German, is the term the unhomely. But in German, the unhomely also weirdly means the homely as well. And I think that that is for exactly the reason why walking past these homes today, I felt I was experiencing both something that was quintessentially homely, but also alienating and weird and unhomely. And certainly if we're thinking about Gothic literature, we can see the, um, you know, the haunted house, the, the dark, strange house, is something that's kind of intimately linked with that kind of knowledge. Uh, that kind of understanding of, of the disturbing potentials of home. But rather than talking about one of the classic haunted house narratives with you here for a minute, um, I'm going to talk about something else which is um, decidedly ne less sort of gothic seeming. And this is uh, from the Lady Book of Nursing's Nursery Rhymes, Three Blind Mice. You can find the image in this video. Just stop on that and rewind back if, uh, if, if you want to check out what I'm saying. And, you know, this, this, this image, it's, you know, the old farmer's wife there, and she's chasing out uh, the three blind mice. And um, I think you can view it as, as an image which is about maintaining the home as something that's safe and, and protected. You've got these alien vermin and you know she's a uh, she's got a she's got a knife 
you know, and she's chasing those guys out and they're running, they're running well away. The house is now clean. It's now protected. The borders have been secured, you know. Comforting, comforting image of home. And if you want to know more about this image, um, and if you're ever in the vicinity of Reading in Berkshire in, um, uh, in, in the UK, um, Reading Museum have got an exhibition on Ladybird, and uh, including that is me doing an extended video talking about this image. But I only want, want to say something quite short and simple about it for now. And that is, it's kind of odd to me that this is about, in one sense, getting all of the alien stuff away and outside the house. But if you actually look at the point of view that frames the picture, the perspective on the picture, the perspective isn't in the house, even though it's the thing that frames the whole picture. It's not inside the house. This is not being viewed from inside the house, but actually outside, and in fact so far outside that the free blind mice are running towards it. If the free blind mice are outside of the house, then the perspective on the house and the perspective on the three blind mice is even further outside of the house. If we look at it, in fact, if we look at the home, I guess there's a kind of an inner sanctum of the home. It's this kind of dark little rectangle behind the wife. And that's where really what's being protected here. It's the most homely thing. First of all, it's the thing that's kind of furthest away from the perspective on this. So the perspective that's seeing this is, is the most unholy, in a sense. But also the perspective can't actually see what's in here other than it being dark. And in fact, the farmer's wife cannot see the inner sanctum of the home. She's too intent on the old, old mice and chasing them away with a carving knife. The thing that's being protected, the thing that is most intimate, the thing that's most private, in a sense, the thing that's most homely, is something that eludes the perspective that's seeing the whole scene, the framing perspective but it also escapes the notice of the farmer's wife. If there's something here about the sanctity of the home, the home being, being protected, there's also something here about that sanctity being dark and unknowable and obscure alien even to the farmer's wife. The centre of the home is the most private space in this image, as I read it. The cleanest space. But it's also the space that isn't seen. It's the most alien and other and mysterious. And there's something in that that is about the tension of the unhomely and the uncanny. That which is most homely is also the strangest, the most obscure and the most alien.